Hey guys, what's up? In today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you a really cool effect in uh, Cinema 4D. It's called the Depth Field Effect. And what it does is it um, it kind of blurs out um, either your foreground or background, depending on how you want it or how you want your effect to be. So instead of going into Photoshop and adding like a Gaussian blur or a lens blur, you could just do this in Cinema 4D and it actually is a really nice uh, effect if you use the right techniques. Um, as you can see here, I just made a quick light setup, and as you can see, um, our uh, foreground is uh, a little bit faded, but as we get towards the background, as you can see, it started to fade away, and that's pretty much what the depth field is, and pretty much all it is is just a camera and uh, used with some depth field, and that's pretty much all it is. So if we were to uh, just delete our camera, because we're going to ma be making a new one, so we'll just delete that. And I already have my scene set up, so let me just get rid of this. And um, so as you can see, we have our scene set up. Um, but pretty much all we're going to do is um, we're going to go up to our render settings. And I'm using global illumination, ambient occlusion, and depth field. We're just going to delete these for now so I can show you how to use them. Um, so pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to go to effect, go at, add ambient occlusion, and global illumination. And in your global illumination cache file, we want to make sure that auto save is unchecked. And go back down to effect, and we're going to add some depth field. And now in our depth field tab, you want to make sure you're in the basics tab. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, all of the used tabs are checked. Um, don't you uncheck, I mean, don't check the gradient, use gradients. Because that will add some gradients to our depth field, making it darker or lighter. We're just going to pretty much keep that uh, alone. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can mess around with the lens sharpness. I guess we can bring the lens sharpness up to about 5%, adding some uh, intensity to it. And we'll bring up the lens intensity. We'll just keep that the same. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we'll just, uh, now what we want to do is when you have your scene set up, we want to, um, what we want to do is we want to get in the position of where we want our camera to be. So we're going to zoom in and like so. Make sure we get into focus. Like that. Let me just go like that. All right. And once you have your thi um, your scene set up and where you want your camera, what we want to do is we want to go over here to our light tool, and we want to go down here to camera. And as you can see, once you have your camera set up, there's this black box right here. Um, when it's black, it means you're not in the perspective of the camera. You're in free roaming, uh, three dimensional plane uh, movement. Um, so what you want to do is you want to click it and when it turns white you're in the perspective of the camera another way that you can do that you can go to cameras scene camera and when it's checked off that means you're in the perspective of a camera and as you can see we're in the perspective of it but you can uh do that that's another way you can do it um so once we have that we want to uncheck that uh to make it black again um and as you can see we have our camera there now and what we're going to do is we're going to to make our depth field, um, we're going to drag um, the, this tab here, right there, and where's the other tab? And we're going to drag, oh, my mistake. <laughs> um, when our camera is selected, you want to go down here to front blur and make sure you're in the depth tab. You want to go to front blur and you want to go to rear blur. And as you can see, that adds a... Um, extra camera focal length um, so what we want to do is we want to bring our front blur as you can see when we move it down there it moves the target distance and we want to move that just on the uh, sphere just on it or a little bit like that that will add some depth to our uh, sphere a little bit and then what we want to do is we want to bring our rear blur in and what we want to do is we want to drag it to um, where you want the uh, where you want it to start fading away at. So we want it to start fading away around here, right before the uh, the um, move it back, right in between the uh, the uh, the polygon or the uh, and between the cube. So pretty much that's where it will start to fade away. So now if we were to click, go back to our camera and click the white uh, uh, focus button. <laughs> Um, what we want to do is we want to just uh, quickly render this out. Oh, wait. Whoa, what's going on? Okay, there we go. 
Sorry about that. So we'll just quickly run into this out. Now, this was just a really quick tutorial. Um, you know, once you have your scene set up, it's a really easy effect. Um, you can mess around with the effects with the end and start blur and, like, the gradient blurs and stuff like that. Um, but this was just a um, quick little uh, tutorial for you guys. Um, leave a comment in the section below uh, to leave me some tutorial suggestions. Um, either in Photoshop, Cinema 40, or After Effects. Um, just leave them because, um, you know... The more ideas I had, the better, because I want feedback from you guys. Um, so yeah, the probably the next tutorial I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do some uh, advanced materialing in Cinema 40. As you can see here, I have some really nice um, GI uh, materials, and that's what I used on these uh, on these uh, objects here. Um, so yeah, uh, and I also have a uh, intro that I'm doing. I haven't rendered it out in Cinema 4D. Um, it will probably take like four to five hours to render because it's my computer's kind of slow. Um, but I'm probably going to be using some After Effects, some like CC Blur and some uh, stuff like that. As you can see now that once it starts rendering, um, our, uh, our polygon and our cube has started to fade away. So, yeah, that's pretty much it guys for this tutorial. Um, so if this tutorial was helpful, please leave a like. Also, um, I made a Twitter, a new Twitter for this uh, channel. Um, my username is at SymmetryHD. Um, so please go check that out. And I also made a Facebook page at uh, Symmetry Tutorials. Um, those will be in the description down below. But um, leave a like if this help tutorial was helpful. Please leave a comment on uh, anything if you need help or stuff like that. Click one of the annotations on screen to go to one of my other tutorials. And uh, thanks for watching, guys.